Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm making this shaker card from start to finish using one of my favorite stamps lately. This is a whippersnapper design stamp and it's called Chester. I'll try to remember to link it in the description box. And as you can see, it's a rubber mounted stamp. So I took out the foam pad that's in my Misty and I'm going to ink that up with some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And sometimes when I stamp this, the middle of his chin I guess it would be get some ink on it so I'm just using a q-tip to make sure to wipe that off so I can get a good clean image and I'm going to stamp that twice again I want to get a good black clean image I'll just go ahead and clean that off with a baby wipe And the next stamp set I'm using for my sentiment is a W plus nine clear stamp set. So I put the foam padding back in and I want to curve one of my, my wording. So I'm just gonna use the clear plastic sheet that came on that stamp set to hold it in place while I put my sentiment together. And then once I get it exactly where I want, I'll close the misty door on it and it'll pick up those stamps. And now I can remove that clear plastic sheet and ink it up with some VersaFine, excuse me, some VersaMark watercolor ink. I'm planning on white embossing this, so I'm using a static pad. I'm going to ink that up twice. Again, just wanting to make sure I get a good impression there. And I'm going to put my Ranger white fine detail embossing powder on it. A little bit of the rabbit was still a little bit wet, so it did get some powder on it, so it was easily removed just with a clean paintbrush. And now I'm going to heat set that. And I know you can't really see it on camera, but once I add my ink to it, you'll be able to see it stands out really nicely. So I'm making sure that's all melted. And now I want to go ahead and make a mask for him. So I'm using the full stick post-it notes. I inked them up again real quick. I'm just pressing it down. I don't need to use the stamp block or anything like that. And I'm going to clean that off using an absorber towel. And now I sped this up quite a bit. I just fussy cut him out. It really didn't take me very long to do. There are little spaces that are a little hard to get to. You can't get to them with the scissors. So you'll see me pull out my craft knife here and cut out those little the spaces between his body and his ears. Again, that only took me just a minute to do. So I'm going to add him on, covering that up, and now I want to make a little bit of a grassy hill. So again, I'm just using some post-it notes, blocking off that section, and I'm pulling out some distress ink. I'm pulling out broken china and tumbled glass, and I'm gonna start out with broken china. I want my darkest portion right at the bottom, and then I'll gradually get a little bit lighter using tumble glass towards the top and I'm just going right above where my sentiment lies and now I'm just switching around my mask and I'm using some hero arts green hills ink again running right across that bottom and now I can go ahead and remove my mask so I'm new to using the zig clean real brush markers and I got this color chart from Jennifer McGuire Inc. her her blog I believe it was she has a free download of it and I live by it I pull it out when I am trying to choose colors and I absolutely am having so much fun with these zig markers super easy to use on this Bristol smooth paper the first color I'm laying down and very lightly is pale pink and I'm just pulling it around with some water and then adding a little bit darker to his nose and his little belly and his ears. I did that by adding a little to that clear block and bringing it over to my, my rabbit that way. And now I'm using some pale green and then a little bit darker shade. I, I saw it needed a little bit darker, so I pulled out the emerald green color. And now for the top of my flower, I wanted to add a little bit of orange and then blend it out with the yellow and then blend it out with the water so it goes to the lightest all the way on the right. For my little ladybug, I'm using red. 
Now I'm testing out a color for the petals and I'm going with lemon yellow. Again, just putting a little bit of color on and pulling it out with the water brush. Super easy to use. I just wanted to pop on real quick and talk about this tonic dye that I'm going to be using for my card today. This one here is the Mixed Scallop and Straight Cut Rectangle. It's a layering die set from Tonic and you get 14 different dies in it. They have both the scalloped edge and the straight edge. So you get a variety of each. And I like that they have little notches on both um, the vertical and the horizontal. So you can match up the center of each die. It's, they're easy to match up. And these large die sets come with this magnetic sheet which is a really strong piece of mag magnet paper. So you can add your dies to the front and the back as well. They also come with this photo sleeve or the sleeve to store your dies in, which works great with this ring binder die case. So this ring binder die case comes in two different sizes. Um, and what I like about it is it has, of course, the ring binder so you can add your photo sleeves with your dies in them and it comes with six magnetic sheets and like I said you can store your dies on the front of the magnetic sheet and the back of it so you're not losing any of your space when it comes to adding your dies and tonic is coming out with a filing box method so once they come out with that you can actually have your dies in the photo sleeve and store them in your filing box. But if you're going to a crop, a class, a friend's house, just on the go, you can put them in your binder, take them with you, and then when you get home, put them right back into your filing box. So I'm looking forward to getting that, and that's why this binder is great. You can store them while you're going. Also, what you'll be seeing, I have not used this yet, so I'm looking forward to using this. This is their smaller dies. This one here is the Mixed Edged Oval Layering Basics die set largest die in this is four inches by 5.1 and as you can see you get quite a few dies with tonics you get a lot of dies for your money so I think this one retails for I think it was like $14.99 I could be wrong on that but I believe it was like $14.99 and look at all the dies that you get with it so really impressive and like I said I look forward to storing them um, in a, a filing box system. This I will only use for taking on the go. And I love how strong the magnetic sheets are. So check out the description box for these. And if you have any questions, let me know. And now I'll get back to my card. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out just a regular frame. And my plan is to put a scallop frame or cut out my, my card portion, I should say. And my plan is to cut a scallop frame for the front of it. So I'm going to use the largest scallop and then the straight edge, which is a couple sizes down. I pulled out some Nina solar white cardstock and this is the 65 pounds. So I went ahead and doubled it up. So I'm just using my ATG to attach two of them together because I want my frame to be a little bit stronger. And now keeping the frame together with some washi tape, I'm going to run that through my Big Shot machine. I did run it through twice be being that I was cutting through two pieces of paper or actually a few times and that cut out beautifully and now it's already adhered together I don't have to worry about adhering that frame together now I'm using some clear cardstock this stuff is really thick and I want to cut the same size as my card base so I'm using that same straight edged die and I'm going to run this through it doesn't cut completely through this stuff is really thick it's not like transparency paper it's really really thick so it cut almost all the way through I just went ahead and followed it around with my craft knife to finish cutting out the rest of it and that's going to be my clear piece for the front of my card so I'm just using some miracle tape going around the edges adhering that down And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to cut out a card base. I'm cutting a standard A2 size card, five and a half by, actually I did by four and a half. I'm scoring it down the center and giving it a good crease with my bone folder. And now I'm going to 
temporarily put my frame in place on top of my card base just to kind of get it where I want so I can place it directly down onto my card fronts. Now I'll press that down and now using some 3M foam tape, I'm going to cut it and do a double layer all the way around my frame. When you're doing a shaker card, you want to make sure that it's completely closed up. You don't want any little piece being open that way your sequins can fall out. So again, I'm doubling that up. And now I'm using my anti-static bag again to go around the edges so nothing sticks to the edges of that. I'm using this really cool Prima metal die that was given to me by Tiffany Solario. And it's a confetti die. Really fun. I was able to pop that out really quick. This glitter paper I'm using is pretty thick and it cut through them beautifully. Made a little bit of a mess, but I was able to clean that up easily. So I wanted to place some of those glitter hearts down with glossy accents. That way they're on the card regardless. And then I'm going to add just a couple more along with a couple sequins to the center of my card. And I went ahead and placed the rest of those in a little bag. That way I have them for a future project. So I removed my tape backing and now I'll make sure to press that down on all sides and set that aside while I clean up my mess. When you're working with glitter like this, that glitter paper, I'm using a Swiffer cloth and it gets up all that glitter. And here's my finished card. I only added a little bit of sequence to it because I really wanted the coloring to show. So I hope you've enjoyed today's process. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and check out the links in the description box. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you.